so here's a mad scratch pole. Do you think it will work? And how cool will this motherfucker be? Sorry. I had to use a little bit of language. Because this thing is just going to be cool. Alright. Well, if you read, then you'll see that I'm using somebody else's little uh, EDF jet design for part of the core of this. But I'm taking it a uh, another step further. So... Alright, I've, I've since refined a bit since after putting this little blueprint together, but what I intend to do is I take two of those little EDF flame jet designs, put two of them together, and at the point where there's the crimp, where you begin to actually spray the liquid, as I'm going to have that right about here, and then after the crimp, it's going to split off in two directions. And the tube will come down, and it'll do several wraps around the actual EDF motor itself. And then come off the EDF motor through the little fan tail to the actual flame ring, which I'm going to do a, a better job in actually designing up uh, a pretty efficient distributor ring, especially since I'm going to run two off of the same manifold. So those will go down to either side, and in between the coils and the engine is where I'm going to slip the little tiny, uh, they have these temperature sensors that you use for when you do water cooling on your computer. It's like a flat little plastic printed circuit board type dealy with a little tiny thermosistor in it. Really, really small. Should fit and I, I should just be able to make a little nick in the motor and then put it in a spot where a, one of the tubes runs on either side of it and the little tiny thing will fit in there perfectly. So each engine will have a temperature sensor plus the actual fuel coming in rather than using uh, the tire heater like he had used, I'm actually going to use the heat generated by the EDF engine itself and because this is a liquid expanding into a gas, it's going to be consuming the heat. So this will actually help to cool our electric motors in the process through all of this. So, there's an improvement upon his design that I'm going to do. Now we've got these two jets going. What I'm going to have it done is you'll see that there's this space here on either side that I have marked out is that the front of the jet is going to have a, a scoop type system uh, more like this so that as it's flying through the air it's going to scoop and force more air uh, up through the sides now this is going to provide the extra oxygen for the afterburner setup but at the same time it's also going to do like what the a regular jet engine does as far as an afterburner, at least to an effect. As in, the fuel and everything is sprayed out uh, into the system and it doesn't actually kick off until it's well away from the actual parts. So as you're like firing up the different layers of afterburner, because there isn't just a single afterburner on a regular jet engine, there's like five levels of afterburner. All right. So as each one kicks off, you can, as you're doing this in the test cell and whatnot, or even while it's flying, you can see the extra rings of burst coming off, and they use the uh, the turkey feathers to compress it in to give it uh, more thrust. And then when you go down to idle and you back off the, the afterburners, then it spreads back out. Now keeping in with that. On the back end of the system, I haven't determined an actual final cut line, but I'm thinking of doing these as a, a somewhat bent design with a hook on it so that it'll uh, let me shrink the f length of this engine system up a little bit. But it's going to be, you know, pretty much that output with these little uh, servo flaps on the galvanized steel that'll come over and actually help to vent this. Now you can see this here, this is like the first idea that I had, but I'm going to have another tube coming up and it's going to run down and you'll see this little heat thing here, this is uh, where the, 
the engines come together in that circle, I'm going to fold the metal like that so that the extra air coming in between the two engines, top and bottom, will be vented over top of the afterburner can. And now what I am actually calling the afterburner can is that here at this point, you'll see how it comes in and it goes into this. What I'm going to have it set up as is there's going to be the, the, the foam and then the galvanized steel can for the afterburner part is going to be shrunk in and I'm going to have it supported with carbon fiber rods because you know they do well with the uh, the heat and all of that there isn't going to be that much heat in there I have threw a sliver of a carbon fiber rod into our fireplace and I've run that thing in blowtorch mode a couple of times and that carbon fiber spar is still intact so yeah um, so yeah, what the how I'm gonna have the afterburner is is the tube will come down, it'll have the 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 pinch in the back, and then it'll come inside the t the tank, so that it's running across the inside top of the tank to get some heating there, but then it's going to split and come down and go on a loop like this, and then the last little bits are gonna fold kind of back and up because in those little tails up, that's where there's going to be the, the least amount of pressure because everything's venting out before it gets to there. So those ones are going to be set to where it blows the last bit of gas just right up into the center of the actual duct system. And the other ones are going to be set so that they're blowing the gas towards the center as well. I'm going to make sure, you know, you put a little tiny move on the hole and drill it into the right spot so that they're all, you know, blowing down into the center and all of that in order to shape the actual fire coming out like you're supposed to do in a, in a jet engine. And if you're wondering how I have, okay, this is the basic thing, okay. Uh, so you can go ahead and do the poll or whatnot, but if you're wondering on the control of what I had planned for this thing, go ahead and keep watching a moment. Alright, so also down in the links there is going to be uh, the link for the Kentec display demo that I did. And this is the Kentec display. It's a little touch screen that you can pick up for 35 bucks at whatever website that I got it from. I just remember how much you paid it. I paid for. And this is the TI uh, Texas Instruments Stellaris Launchpad uh, LM4F120XL 32 bit microcontroller running at 20 megahertz with uh, the SPI, SPI and UART and all of those different protocols and different bus protocols and everything. <coughs> so in the link, it just shows you the basic setup of how I have the screen and all of that. But imagine having, you know, the jet sitting there, and you've got this, you know, front of the jet here, engine back this way, but you've got this guy set up, so it's all of the text comes up reading it this way, but it's oriented this way. So you've got it like picture of the two jet engines on there, you've got the RPM uh, reading off of either of the the actual engines you've got the temperature reading for both of the motors and then you've got this thing that also hooks up to an infrared sensor and hooks up along with the um the little taser box the flyback transformer so that uh this thing takes in the throttle and it takes in a switch so it'll take two channel input okay it goes in between your throttle system and it'll take a separate activation switch and how it's going to work in this aspect is uh, it will control the throttle to both of the engines it'll make sure both the engines are running at exactly the same RPM it'll monitor the engines temperature it'll also have the the control into the OLED strips that'll be onto the system in order to do colored flash patterns and different things to warn of particular conditions while in flight 
it'll have uh, set up so that the the switch, the two different control modes, is for ba uh, the startup and for actual afterburner flight. <clears throat> On how that's going to work is that in starter mode, uh, throttle from 1 to 75% is going to be running up the EDF motors to full speed, and then that last 25% is going to be uh, what tells the system to begin the, the actual jet engine ignition. Now, it'll go through, it'll kick the thing off, and it'll, for you know, a second, second and a half, and it'll have infrared sensors on both engines. It'll also have control over two of these little 12-volt uh, solenoids that I found online that I intend to get for this as well. Alright, so the one solenoid controls <clears throat> the, the gas to the basic engines slash engine coolers, and the other solenoid is specifically for the, the afterburner. Um, if it doesn't receive a signal out of both of the little infrared signals, it'll go through a sequence and just, you know, try and relight, try and relight, try and relight. If it can't get both of the sides to light up properly, it'll shut down and flash the, uh, the LEDs in a particular color pattern to be decided later. It doesn't matter. Anywho, so, if it can't ignite, it'll self-shut down and won't let you go from there. Well, let's go ahead and assume for now that since I'm going to build this engine and actually bench test it before it gets installed into an aircraft, um, let's just say, you know, it does light, okay? Both the engines kick off, I've got both the jets going. <clears throat> so now I've got the flames coming off of those engines, coming straight down, and both of these servos are in their wide open position, so I've got two flames shooting out the back, all right, uh, giving me the, the extra bit of thrust. So, I'm at full throttle, I let go of the brakes, it takes off, I get up into the air, and because the, the engines are ignited, the system knows that it's, it's going to keep the, uh, the engines ignited, I'm going to pull the strict stick down to about half, the motors are going to stay full up, and the system is going to wait for the, the mode switch. If it doesn't get the mode switch within three seconds, it will automatically shut off the, the gas and shut down the whole uh, thrust system. Okay, But you throttle down to half and hit that mode switch, now the system is engaged into your sonic flight mode which is throttle position of 1 to 25 percent will actually, uh, if you hit that range, it'll completely shut down the, the jet system and require you to go back to mode 1 for the ignition sequence. Or what you can do is, if you stay above 25 uh, percent in the, uh, the 25 to 75 percent range, that, that but there in the stick is what it'll go through and sequence the the EDF speed along with hold it, closing in these baffles here in order to attain more thrust. Now when you kick it up that last 25% what it's going to do is it's going to kick in the actual afterburner system and we should get one hell of a fucking flame flying out this. As into here, we've got the two jets coming down, and then we start, sp as these are closed up, we start spraying everything right here towards this point, so that we get this big ignition right here, just before the, the full baffle close, to turn this entire thing into a, a full output. And at the same time, okay, if we use an individual servo on both sides, we can also do a little bit to feed some of the rudder control if we so choose through the computer system in order to accommodate for left-right thrust. Like uh, we can have a, because I intend to get a, a larger channel system before I do this, I can put in a, another mode switch or another trim switch so that I can trim my thrust left or right 
so, so that, you know, yeah. So, let me know if you think uh, all of that's going to work. If you think I've thought up enough uh, safety controls and put enough thought into uh, its actual life and all of that and into the actual, uh, actual mechanics of it as well. Tell me if I'm crazy. I know I am already. But I'm going to make this happen.